Greetings, I'm your host, Glenn Alex, and this is The Glenn Alex Show, live on the Bold Brave TV network. Each episode of The Glenn Alex Show focuses on a different aspect of health, because my life's work is about total health, and I am on a mission to help as many people as I can be joyful, connected, confident, and complete. The life experience we call wealth, W-E-L-L-T-H, which is health plus other riches. And I'm super excited about this episode of The Glenn Alex Show because it is on the science of thoughts, how thoughts become things. So please help me welcome my guest, best-selling author, Barry Nicolau. Hey, Barry. Hey, Glenn. Thank you for having me. It's so beautiful to share this space with you. Oh, I totally appreciate you taking time to do this. So please take a minute and introduce yourself. <laughs> well, it's very early in the morning here in Sydney, Australia. It is yes, a beautiful is. moment of the day to just uh, to just talk about this beautiful subject uh, that we are going to be unpacking today. Uh, but essentially, my life's been a bit of a whirlwind. It's a little bit of an up and down, like most of us, up and down kind of uh, valleys and peaks of, of of our struggles, but also our triumphs as well. Um, so it's been pretty cool. I kind of got this inspiration about seven years ago for me at a cemetery of all places. Kind of was a little bit surreal for me. It was a moment of clarity um, that really struck out. Like cemeteries are really kind of rich places for me. That You know, you see all these unused gifts and unsaid I love yous and and it ends up being this place of inspiration uh, because life is finite in that respect. You know, we only have a certain amount of years here. And then so it's about making sure that we live those years with intention and with love and with respect for yourself and respect for others and putting your passion out there in the world and making sure that people know you for that. Um, this special divine light that you have within you that's very specific to you to be able to bring that out is an absolute privilege. Okay. So, yeah. Well, mm. I, I think it's our privilege to have you here and to share your wisdom with us. So thank you again for that. So you are a well-being, empathy, and leadership specialist. Mm. Describe, mm. T explain to us what that is. Well, it's interesting because my work pre, pre-COVID, pre-pandemic was with one-to-one -one work. Uh, so I was helping uh, individual people to kind of get a grasp of who they are and to try and move forward from, you know, a lot of trauma that they've had in their lives. Um, and I love that. I love the one-to-one -one work for me. Um, and then COVID hit. And then what we found was that corporations were in desperate need of this help as well. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just individuals. Um, so I had a lot of people reach out to me. Um, so, you know, HR departments from corporations that were saying, hey, Barry, we'd like to understand more about what you do and what you're up to because, you know, we have this workforce that feels underwhelmed. Um, a lot of us are working from home. A lot of us don't know what to do to come, when we come into the office. Um, and I felt this was such a natural progression for me from a business point of view, but also from an empathy and heartfelt point of view as well, where I have translated my spiritual practices where I help people understand who they are and transcend those programs into corp into the corporate space. Um, and it's been an absolute ride. It's been so, so great because it's helped me go on a learning curve, but it's helped so many corporations in Australia. We're looking at a couple of government contracts now. It's getting okay. very, very exciting because um, wow. you start to understand that, that, that money isn't the currency anymore. It's energy. Energy is the true currency. And we have to spend energy very wisely. And what we find, and in my line of work, what, what we uncover is that um, the amount of energy we spend that isn't for our highest good um, and, and where that energy comes from, it's usually habitual thoughts or inherited thinking. And you think to yourself, if we were just a little bit more careful on how we spend our energy, just like we're a little bit careful with how we spend our money, you know, we don't mm -hmm. kind of just blow it because we have to have some, or we hope that we have to have some in reserve, you know, for a right. bit of an emergency. Right. So our energy is the same, but we don't view it that way. So we only view it as, oh, we'll just spend it with whatever, whatever TV show comes on, we'll watch that. And whatever friend enters our lives, we'll just listen to them. And whatever food that's in front of us, we'll just eat that sort of thing. And we're not discerning enough about the health oriented aspects of those decisions. Okay. So, so it ends up becoming very, very, I, I end up becoming like a surgeon in some respects. I kind of look at where our thoughts are manifesting and then making sure that they're coming from a place of, of wanting to um, 
release who we are as people and and make that a value based proposition into the world. Okay, wow, that's that's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot to swallow. And it's, it, yes, and it's a lot of good stuff. What I'm yeah. Uh, yeah. what I'm interested in though, before we get into the actual science, which I find mm -hmm. absolutely fascinating, mm -hmm. is it, it's obvious that you're passionate about your work. Mm -hmm. So. Yes. What was the trigger for you to go in this direction? Well, that's a really deep question. Um, so for me, I found a lot of unhappiness in the world. Um, and this is going to sound like a really simple answer, but it's the truth. Um, I, I wanted to be a beacon for light. I wanted to be um, the person that lights the path to let others know that it's possible to um, tread this path of enlightenment, to make sure that we're true to ourselves. Um, and that moment at that cemetery was was crazy for me. Um, it was a moment where total clarity came into my life. But I will say, Glenn, um, I was in a position of total vulnerability and total surrender. And, and that's the key. You can't let the ego get involved when you're searching. It's got to be a place of just being open to what the next right move is. Um, and for me, I listened to that and I placed action into it. Um, and I think that's the key is when we get those whispers, we have to make sure that we take the next right move from that because it's a specific path made just for you. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, thank you for sharing that. We'll get into that more when we come back from break. I'm Glenn Alex, Sounds and this is the Glenn Alex show live on the bold brave TV network. Stay tuned. We are back. I'm your host, Glenn Alex, and you are watching The Glenn Alex Show live on the Bold Brave TV network. I am here with best-selling author, Barry Nicolau, and we're talking about the science of thoughts, how thoughts become things. And when we left the previous segment, oh, before I get into that, let me remind you all who are watching live that you can type a comment in the chat section and we'll address it uh, throughout the show. You're also welcome to call in later when we open up the lines for your calls in segment five. So feel free to comment and chat anytime. So I'm here with uh, Barry Nicolau and we're talking about the science of thoughts. We left off uh, the first segment when Barry was telling us about his, um, what ignited his, his path to do the work that he is doing. So Barry, just, were you as spiritual before that um, graveyard moment, or it became more it became more spiritual afterwards? I, I'll, um, I was I was religious. I was Christian, and I am Christian today. Um, but I was also searching, um, and I was very perplexed with um, the, the 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 trajectory that my life was going on because. Glenn, it was interesting, like I was earning money, right? Don't get me wrong, but I wasn't fulfilled. There was a mm -hmm. sense of me that just wasn't being fulfilled. And I didn't know why, because I thought that fulfillment just came from earning money. And I've long since discovered that it, it's not just in the earning of money that feeds your soul. So uh, at that moment, it was a total moment of vulnerability. I, I, I more or less felt three words that bombarded my soul. And those three words were live your life. And I thought, not the greatest epiphany in the world. You know, <laughs> you want to give me something, give me the lottery numbers, you know, so I can really. <laughs> <laughs> but it was at a stage where I got to understand that um, that the, the loves and the passions and, and the things that we want to give to the world uh, don't necessarily come from just earning money. Money ends up giving you freedom of time and freedom of the ability to do the things that you want to do and not be kind of tied down to one thing, like a job, for example. But but there was this sense, and, and as soon as it come out, as soon as I said, well, you know, live your life, okay, that doesn't really mean anything to me. Um, I just went home that night and went to bed. Like I thought, this is too scary to consider what this could be. Um, and then I wake up at 3 a.m. and I had the word your highlighted in my mind, like live your life. Don't try and live a life based on somebody else's opinion. Um, and then I just started writing at 6 a.m. in the morning. I just started writing about all the things that lit me up and all the, all the, I started researching people that came from ultimate hardship and that had ultimate 
success and fulfillment? How did they do it? And what was their path? And and then you start to kind of, I had chapter headings and I had all these, and this thing looked like a book. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, I know no one in the publishing industry. I have no author friends. I've got no one. How do I get this thing? And, and something quite amazing then happened. And I believe that when you're on path, I believe that green lights happen often, right? Well, absolutely. Um, I get this Facebook message, Glenn, and this is a random Facebook message that was like an advertisement on Facebook that said, we publish books. If you have a manuscript, we'd love to hear from you. Okay. And I thought, where is this going? So I got in touch and this is the whisper that I keep talking about. The, I got in touch with John. He was the publisher. We went for a coffee. We sat down. We got a campaign launched on Amazon. We got to number one in six countries and 19 categories on Amazon, an online course from the book. And it's just ends up being a very strategic, you know what to do next, because you understand that making these decisions becomes it feels familiar for me now. So okay. for, for people listening and, and for yourself, Glenn, I'm not sure if you agree with this or not, but you get to a position in your life where you understand that there's an individual whisper meant for you and and the majority of people tend to ignore it because there's other pressing things to do. Life is busy, right? There's kids, there's yeah. family, there's work, there's government policies, there's COVID, there's whatever. Then you get lost in this machine of society. Okay, um, let me interject something, Barry. Please, um, please. I, 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 I do agree with you. And what mm. I find a lot with clients who are experiencing anxiety and depression is that they want to know the guaranteed next step. They want to yeah. know all the how tos. Yeah. They want you. They want me to lay it out for them. And and what I always mm. advise is, you'll know when you get there. Yeah, learning, you learning really is in the doing. You can't foresee every single step you learn to adjust. And if it yeah. works in the moment, keep doing it. If it doesn't do something else. And that's, yeah. that's how you you walk and you learn and you grow and you heal yourself basically from from these things that ail you and you're absolutely right. Mm. We are way too materialistic. Mm. Way mm. Too materialistic. Mm. So yeah. it, it sounds like once you started started on your path, then mm. it unfolded for you naturally. Well, and, and I think that's the take home message so far for me on this journey for me is that um, if you're consistently finding resistance in your life and if you're consistently finding um, red, red lights, I keep calling them red lights, then it's important to kind of at least progress where the green lights are. So, so, so if, for example, if you're looking for someone to pay you attention, look where you're already getting attention. Look at the people that are already giving you their undivided, right? And then okay. make sure that you, you fulfill that world as best as you can as well. Don't just face resistance and go, I'm pushing and I'm forcing. I've stopped forcing things now and I've gotten into a space of allowing. Um, and it's beautiful because it feels like there's a path just for me and there is, and there's a path just for you. And there's a path just for every person listening on the planet. There are specific paths for us to follow. And, you know, we've got choice so we can follow it or we can leave it alone. But, yes. but if you've got the courage, follow it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's some pretty <laughs> powerful stuff. So you've yeah. laid the foundation of, uh, being open, being connected, and mm. uh, learning and allowing uh, your path to unfold before you. So what I want to get into in the next segment is the specific mm. way thoughts manifest work scientifically, okay? Sounds great. And, and how you can build on the foundation that you laid for us. So we are going to take a short break right now. I'm Glenn Alex, and this is The Glenn Alex Show live on the Bold Brave TV network. So when Barry and I return, we will get into the specific scientific stuff of how your thoughts work. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm Glenn Alex, and you are watching The Glenn Alex Show live on the Bold Brave TV network. I am here having a fascinating conversation with Barry Nicolau. 
well-being, empathy, and leadership specialist. And we are about to get into the science of thoughts, the actual way thoughts work scientifically. So I'm looking forward to this segment. Barry, Barry, you let you yes. laid the foundation. <laughs> so it's exciting. Go for it. It is exciting. Okay, cool. Go for I'll, it. I'll, I'll try to fit as much in. Um, so I guess before we get to the science, I just want to talk about Einstein for a minute because I always go back to science when I want to understand something. Um, so the left brain and the right brain is working in tandem. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so Einstein um, postulated this very, very deep question that uh, not many people know about, but we answer, we either answer this question subconsciously, you know, either we don't know we're answering it or we answer it consciously. So we, you know, we make a specific decision to answer this question. And the question is this, and everyone has to answer this question that's listening right now, which is, do I believe? that I live in a toxic universe or do I believe that I live in a friendly universe? Now, now the point of the question is not to give me a long drawn out answer of, oh, Barry, there's both. Then this is the reasons for both. Um, you've got to reduce your answer to one word, which is either toxic or friendly, because that's what you end up manifesting from. That's, that's your core pivotal manifestation point. So if okay. you genuinely believe the world is toxic and there's no judgment here, right? But if you do, then you will then see events and scenarios and people and situations and circumstances that support toxicity. Whereas if you are a kind of barrier, I believe the world's a friendly place, you will also see situations, friends, situate, uh, circumstances and people that match that view. And then you will live a life based on those views, right? So that's the very, very important next step to consider before we're talking about the science. So once okay. you've made that decision, whatever it is, you get to a point where you understand the science and this is the science. So I want you to look at your hand and I want you to consider that you've got flesh and bone, which we all know. And in that flesh and bone, you take a microscope, the doctor will take a microscope and they'll say, well, Barry, inside your, 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 your flesh and bone, there are cells and we all buy that. And then you go down further still into cells and you go, well, what's inside cells? And you'll find molecules. And you go, that's interesting. So let's go further down. Let's see how far we can go here into the human body, right? And you go down into molecules and you'll find atoms. And then you go down further still into atoms, you know, looking for your source, looking for where things come from. How do you exist? How is this possible? And inside atoms, you find subatomic particles. And you, because you're an inquisitive type of person, you want to go inside subatomic particles and you want to go, well, what's inside those? I want to go deeper in the body. And you see these little things called quarks, Q-U-A-R-K-S. You can Google quarks and have a look. Now, when you look at quarks under an electron microscope, what you'll find is that the molecular structure of quarks shift. They change. And you wonder what actually is making them do that. Why are they shifting and changing? And from all the research that I've done with my new book, um, I've looked at all the science around the world. And from what I can find, the only thing that forces quarks to shift like that is thought. Thought. So okay, the observer effect. The person, please. Are, are, you, yeah. are you talking about quantum physics? I am. We're getting into the yeah. quantum physics area now, which is pretty, pretty cool. So so you look at observation. So you're actually looking at this quark and you give it a positive thought, you give it a negative thought, and it actually shifts molecular structure. So when we say thoughts become things, that's the chain of events. That's 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 the family tree, more or less, that, that goes back to thought and that you see things into physical reality. So if you're looking for a person or if you're if you're looking for a person to help you in business, or if you're looking for someone who you want to have a life partner with, you know, or have, have, have a great life with, or if you're looking for a doctor that can help you with cancer or whatever, whatever the question is, um, and you, you consider the thought, that's the chain of events that runs right up to the physical world. So it's pretty cool to consider that. So thoughts have this huge manifesting impact. Everything that exists today that was man-made Everything was once a thought. Everything existed as a consideration, as a thought. I wonder how we could make this work. Like even this beautiful program we're talking on today, it was a thought in someone's mind. I wonder how we can get this beautiful show up and running. 
and all of a sudden we're talking on it. So it's kind of real now. So so this is what's this is what's really cool. You start to consider that anything that you want in your future and anything that you've had to date was once a thought that we've added emotion to that we've manifested into the real world. Okay. So what would you say is more impactful, the emotional attachment to the thought or the frequency of the thought? Uh, I would probably weigh it to the emotional attachment. Actually, they're almost one in the same for me. So I've looked at it and if I, for example, have a, I have a friend right now, um, just to give you an example, um, and he's got stage four cancer, right? Um, and he is not going down the traditional route of seeking chemotherapy and going to doctors. He's looked at mindset, nutrition, and exercise. He's looked at those three things. Um, and <laughs> he's going to the doctor and the doctor is saying to him, I don't understand what's happening with you because you're not taking the traditional methods that we apply in Western medicine, but the cancer feels like it's it's actually receding in your body. I don't know quite what's going on. Oh, and, wow. he, you know, him, he's saying, well, I'll tell you what's, you know, it's very forthright. <laughs> I'll tell you what's going on. I'm changing things and I can see results. And I'm not saying that everyone that's got cancer is going to, is going to, is going to ail themselves this way. But isn't it interesting that if thought has the power to create destruction, then you also have to award it with the power to create health. Yes. So you can't, you can't just look at it through one lens. So, so if you see, for example, if you're a toxic kind of person, they all bury the world's a toxic place and you give me examples, you have to admit that, that it has to go the other way. Like that has to, the, the pendulum has to swing the other way. And, and this is what I keep reminding myself and the people that I coach and the corporations is that we get habitually down a negative path and because we've done it for so long, it becomes normalized. And then we don't know and we don't remember feeling any other way because we've just kept doing it over and over again. And it just feels natural and normal to the mind and to the body to talk about this stuff or to, yeah. you know, to, to, to complain, right? Yes. It becomes normalized to complain. Yes. And then all of a sudden we forget to be grateful for the, the million good things that are happening already for us. Oh, so we, often, uh, we often ignore the duality of our existence. We oh, and <laughs> see things all one way or all the other. There's yeah. a lot of gray area and there's a, a certain kind of balance mm. to things, I think. I think there's definitely mm. a balance, good, bad, light, dark, those kinds of things. And mm. when we just stay centered on one, we, we rob mm. ourselves of the opportunity to learn and grow and to experience the fullness of life. Mm. Spot on. Absolutely. And and uh, if you wanted a great example on how to consider how the mind works, if you think of soil, the soil in, in, in a garden is not um, biased to growing a rose bush. It's not going to just say, I'm going to give nutrition to the nice plants. It's saying, <laughs> I'm going to give expansion to all of it. Yes. Whatever you plant in me, I know that you know what you're doing. So Even you'll plant weed. weeds. Yeah, yeah. You're, and it's sort of like, you know what you're doing. I'm going to give this nutrients, sunlight and water, and I'm going to grow this beautiful weed for you. And then we say in our wisdom, I don't want weeds. And what does the soil say back? Well, that's what you that's planted. What you, right. So, so God's given us the ultimate form of checks and balances. He's saying to us, you can do whatever you like. But you might want to plant some rose bushes every, every so often. And we're saying, well, yeah, OK, but it's a noisy world and, and there's lots of seeds everywhere and everything's growing at different rates and there's different things growing all the time. And we've got messy gardens. And God's like, well, you have the ultimate form of growing whatever you want. So, so we have to, in more or less, become a very discerning gardener. We have, to, we have to get really cultivating and understand, not so much dig up the soil because the soil's job is already there. It's right. about what are we doing? What are we planting here? Um, and making sure that um, we don't blame anyone else for the, for the plants that we have in our own backyard because a lot of them are, are seeds that we've planted okay. ourselves. Mm. Okay. 
Well, hold that thought, uh, Barry. It's time to take another short break. I'm Glenn Alex on the Glenn Alex Show, live on the Bold Brave TV network. When Barry and I return, we will break it down even further into how thoughts manifest into your life. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. We are back. I am your host, Glenn Alex, and this is The Glenn Alex Show, live on the Bold Brave TV network. Here having a fascinating conversation with Barry that I'm getting caught up in myself <laughs> about the science of thoughts and how your thoughts manifest in your life. So uh, in the previous segment, Barry just laid it out there for us how the science actually works, quantum mm -hmm. physics of thought. And so Barry, I wanna take a look at unwanted circumstances yeah well what do you um, have to say about long, that how long do you have um, <laughs> there's a lot of those <laughs> well we don't have to go through every circumstance no, but just the idea good. that people are having uh, our lives are not what they say they want yeah absolutely and it's a really good subject so thank you for bringing it up um so from my research uh there's three primary areas that uh things happen to us, right? So just to consider this for a second. Um, the first area is habitual thoughts. Now, habitual thoughts are thoughts that we just have by habit because we've had them for so long. They just keep end up, keep, uh, they, they're inside us. We've done it yesterday. We've done it last week, last month, last year, and it just ends up being normalized for us. Um, so habitual thoughts is the first way. The second way is inherited thinking. So inherited thinking is the way, say, your great-great-grandparents thought, which passed thinking practices biologically down to your great-grandparents, your, your, your parents, and then yourself. And, you know, there's a lot of good thinking practices there. You know, you'd be honest with people, honest with yourself, you love deeply, you save your money, you do all these right things, you help society, you know, all these great biological traits get passed down. But what we're not very uh, good at discerning is that there are also fee-based traits that get passed down generationally as well. It's almost like, you know, you were born on that side of the river and the enemy is born on that side of the river and it's a 300-year-old biological passed down trait and now all of a sudden you don't know why, but you hate the people that live on that side of the river, which makes right. no sense, <laughs> you, know, you know, because this happened 400 years ago, 300 years ago. So it's kind of, you start to become a little bit discerning on the fee-based traits that no longer serve us in this current world that we're in right now. Okay. So that's the second way. And the third way is life experiences that happen to us and for us. So they're the three areas that, that you stem your base, your reality on, and that we continue to see wanted and unwanted circumstances from coming into our lives. So if you're in a situation, for example, if you're in a situation where you're receiving a lot of unwanted circumstances, the first thing I would be doing is taking a pad and pen out and going, what do I believe to be true from my mum and dad? Like, what are the great traits that they've passed on to me? But what are the somewhat fearful traits that they've also passed down to me? Let's write those down. And then write down your habitual thoughts and go, what are the thoughts that I've got on autopilot? Are they healthy? Are they unhealthy? Could I be spending my time adding value to other people instead of watching Netflix? Is that something that I could be doing? And then the third area is, is you know, you look at your job and your family and going, you know, what's healthy here and what's unhealthy? Are there toxic situations that are happening inside my circle that I could be um, discerning a little bit deeper and going, that's not really for me anymore. Is, is that the answer? And there's a lot of parental traits that get passed down that, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'll say this obviously, that are not healthy because mum and dad did the best that they could with the information that they had. Today we've got new information, so it's our job to do better, right? So a job to know yeah. that this stuff's now really kind of out there and the internet is a great tool for that. They didn't have the internet 40 years ago, 50 years okay. ago. So, so, so yeah, it becomes exciting. Yes. Well, and that brings up two things for me. Number one, yeah. the habitual thinking, the inherited thinking, um, mm. speak to being not being present, being on yeah. living on autopilot yeah. and just having mm. life uh, 
go automatically mm -hmm. for you, but because when you are present to your moment, then you get all kinds of new insights and new information that can totally take you in a better direction. Mm -hmm. That brings mm -hmm. up the one mm -hmm. thing for me. The other thing it brings up, so in, I don't know a lot of people who would be able to just say, well, let me write down and go through the questions that you posed. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering mm -hmm. is the first question they should ask themselves is, do I believe the world is toxic or friendly? Should they start there? Best, best, that's, that's the concrete underneath the house. Okay. You, unless you answer that question, you cannot build framework on to actually build your house. Um, but the scary thing is, Glenn, is that we all make that decision without knowing it. So it's whether you're making it consciously or whether you're just on autopilot, as you've just beautifully put, um, or you're making it subconsciously. And, and try your best to make that a conscious decision, a conscious answer. Try your best. And, and for most of the people, what I found is that the friendly people, the people that have hopped on the friendly side of that conversation, that's been a conscious decision. Whereas the people that I've said, well, Barry, the world's toxic and here's why, that's been on autopilot usually, um, coming from a sense of being on autopilot, because the toxic people don't necessarily see that there's good in the world. They are just keyhole focused on their pain and yes. keyhole focused on, on the events that are real, that are happening in the world, COVID, this attack in Ukraine, uh, babies dying from, like all these horrible things. But then they're not weighing that up with anything else. And, you know, we all see these court of law scenes where the prosecution and the defence speaks, right? Well, right. you can't just let one side talk and then shut the court down. <laughs> You've got to be able to to kind of both lawyers have to be able to uh, present their arguments. And, and, you know, the friendly people know that there's toxicity, but they just don't live there. Yeah. So, well, I, I'm, I'm putting out um, a call for everyone who's watching live and who will watch the replay to ask mm -hmm. yourself that question. Do you believe the mm -hmm. world is toxic or friendly and start there and make it a mm -hmm. conscious answer and either answer is fine. That's just the place where you start. So mm -hmm. we'll pick up a little more uh, about that on the other side of the commercial It's now time to take another short break. And when we come back, we will take your calls. So dial, um, 866-451-1451, 866-451-1451. And remember, you can comment in the chat anytime. I'm Glenn Alex. This is the Glenn Alex Show live on the Bold Brave TV network. Stay tuned and we'll be right back to speak with you. Welcome back. I'm Glenn Alex, and this is the Glenn Alex Show live on the Bold Brave TV network here with well-being, empathy, and leadership specialist, Barry Nicolau, talking about the science of thoughts and how your thoughts manifest in your life. And the lines are open, so please call in 866-451-1451. That's 866-451-1451. And if you're too shy to call, you can type us a comment in the chat section. So Barry, while uh, we're waiting for calls to be connected, mm. I, I just want to touch on, you know, thoughts become things. We have habitual and inherited thinking. Mm. I, what about the person who um, is living in poverty or has a series mm. of unlucky things happen in their world? I, I, mm. I, I don't want them to walk away from this saying it's your fault that this is happening no, by, and blame the no. victim because you, you created this yourself. So how would mm. you explain it to them? Well, it's really interesting because I've had this conversation come up a few times before and and I I currently have um, a family that I am helping out in Uganda, right? Just right now, just to give you an idea of what's going on with okay. me. And they are very, they're in a situation where I'm sending them money to build a pigsty because they want to have pigs to be able to support and make money and how else. And okay. the, the, the specific individual who I'm helping out has come from ultimate hardship and ultimate um, suffering and what he has said is he said Barry I have to I have to be in a position where um, I understand that there's good things happening in the world um, as well as 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 well as what I'm going through as well 
Um, but he said, I want to thank you for being in a position to be able to help me. So if you're in a position where you're really down and, and, and it all looks bleak, just have a look at the next person you could possibly give assistance to. And I know that sounds like a really kind of horrible thing to say in some respects because you're going through such hardship yourself. But whenever you're down in the dumps, whenever you feel that life is giving you lemons consistently, there's two ways to handle it usually. And this is this is coming from personal experience because I never used to be doing what I'm doing now. I, I could either get down on myself and I really did for many, many years. And then the thing that turned things around for me was I said, how can I add value to other people's lives as best as I can? And it's really interesting, Glenn, because that then made a turn of events for me. It's almost like you end up receiving the value that you offer back to you. So please, if you're in a position, and I know it's really hard to say because you could be in a very, very horrible situation, but just try your best to go easy on yourself, first of all, uh, be yes. kind to yourself, second of all, because you're in a you know bit of a dire straits in some respects. But just be in a position where you know you've got God's love inside of you, you've got light inside of you, you've got empathy inside of you. How do you bring those beautiful traits out despite the situation that you find yourself in and add value to yourself and add value to just one other person, just consider one person that you could add value to. And all of a sudden it ends up being reciprocal. It ends up being, you end up being in a situation where life helps you out. And, and I've had this happen to me multiple times. I've been in a situation where I don't know what to do next. And the, the next thing that I did and the research that I've done is to, how do you add value to somebody else's life, Barry? It's almost like life ends up reciprocating that back to you. And all of a sudden, a person, a situation, a, someone, something happens to you that enables you to lift as well. So it's all about helping yourself to be able and then helping others. And, and then what comes back from that is, is you lifting as much as possible. But you've got to answer Einstein's question at the same time. Okay. Um, because, you know, you've got to believe that the world's a friendly place. You've got to okay. get to that side. And if you, if you can just get there and if you can just buy that, that there are good acts happening every day that you are not privy to. We're not privy to babies that are surviving cancer. We're not privy to kidney transplants. We're not privy to marriages getting back together. We're not privy to those things, but they're happening. Yes. So just acknowledge that those things are also going on right now. There are refugees being taken in. You know, there's this horrible situation in Florida right now. Like there are there are good people out there doing good things with very little. So just try your best, if you can, to add value to somebody else's life. And I promise you, it'll come back to yourself as well. And, and that reminds me of the saying, what goes around, comes around. <laughs> it's a saying for a reason, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. And it also yeah. uh, brings to mind that adding value to someone else's life can open the door to gratitude. And when you open the door to gratitude, that is mm. a deep connection to who you truly are, um, mm. your, your personal mm. truth, and those kinds of mm. things. So gratitude is a Absolutely. huge key. It's And it's huge right now in the world right now. There's a lot of speakers and authors and presenters that are talking about gratitude. Just to give you an idea how powerful gratitude is, right? I've done some research for this new book of mine uh, coming out in um, November the 18th. It's called Move the Mountain. So if okay. you're on Amazon, grab yourself a copy. Um, and I've looked at the four major religions in the world, Glenn. So I've looked at Christianity, Buddhism, Islam, and Hinduism. And those four religions account for 83% of the planet. It's like 83% of the human population on the planet are those four religions. Wow. And I've gone into the literature of all those religions to understand the religion deeper. And do you know what's in all of those religions? Gratitude. Gratitude. Gratitude ends up being a core founding pillar in all those four religions. So, for example, okay, if you wanted to get four people, let's say you had an Islamic cleric, you had a Christian priest, you had a Buddhist monk, and you had a, a Hindu holy man, and they're all sitting around a table, and they all had their opposing views on why their religion is right and why they believe it. And if you throw gratitude on the table, 
and say, what do you guys think of this? They will all nod their heads and say, mm-hmm. yes, you are right. So that's the best place to start to build a conversation on. We, we've got the framework now. We've, we've got the base of the house. The concrete is there. How do we get people talking again? So if you're in a situation where you've got opposing views in family members, or if you're in a situation where you've got this, um, this, this part of you that doesn't quite know how to make the next right step, try to find common ground with who you're with. Oh, you both might agree on uh, gratitude could be a, a, a founding pillar of it all. And then you can start to build a conversation based on something you both agree on. And okay. I think that's a really good way to consider conflict resolution. And it's also a good way to, to, to consider that um, the great spiritual masters of the last two and a half thousand years, they were always talking about gratitude and higher human awareness. Mm-hmm. And and it's really important to consider this. Just to give you a quick example, if well, Glenn, and, if you're and, 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 I, I'm yeah, going go to have to cut you off. It's time to take our last go break. Sorry, Barry. <laughs> Okay, I am Glenn Alex, and you are watching The Glenn Alex Show on the Bold Brave TV Network. When we come back, Barry will sum it all up for us. So stay tuned, (laughs) and we'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm your host, Glenn Alex, and you are watching The Glenn Alex Show live on the Bold Brave TV Network. Having a fascinating conversation with best-selling author Barry Nicolau. Wish we had all day to talk about it. Unfortunately, we don't. So, Barry, I just want to thank you again for making time to be here, for getting up before the roosters in Australia <laughs> to be here. And I'm going to I'm going to ask you to sum it all up in one nugget. What do you want okay. the one takeaway to be about how thoughts manifest in your life and the science of it? Okay, so what I need you to just consider is just one statement, which is um, identify the next right move for you. So if if you've got something you want to materialize, what would that look like? What would the next right move look like? Don't look at the whole whole thing that you want to manifest right now. Just look at the next right move. Would it be to call your accountant to, you know, to look at friends that might know someone beautiful for you as a partner or whatever the next right move looks like for you? If you're inspired by this show and you're inspired by what's inside you, make use that fuel and make the next right move. Okay, fantastic. Mm. Thank you for that. Mm. Now, if someone wants to contact you or um, do a consultation with you, <laughs> how can they yeah. contact you? So, so just type my name into Google, um, just Barry, B-A-R-R-Y, and then Nicolau, N-I-C-O-L-A-O-U. Um, dot com is the website. It's very easy. Or just Google me and you'll find the first one or two pages on Google has all my contact details there. Oh, so fantastic. BarryNicolau.com. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much, Barry, for being here. I deeply appreciate it. And I, I love what you, what you shared with us. And I really hope everyone takes it and run, runs with it. So thank you again. Thank you for having me. It's beautiful. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. You take care. Bye. Bye. Okay. Well, and I thank you so much for tuning in today. And I really hope you learned something and we'll use the information because thoughts do become things. If you change your thoughts, you change your outcomes. Negative, unrealistic, and anxious thinking do manifest in your reality. Yet you have more control over your mind than you think. So use your power to fill your mind with thoughts that empower and inspire you. Visualize the life you want in as much detail as you can because thoughts do become things. So make the most of it. I'm Glenn Alex, and this is the Glenn Alex Show on the Bold Brave TV network. Please visit glennalex.com if you wanna learn more about my work in total health And um, join us next week for more on your health. Until next time, be well.